Hey there classy people, this is Josh the Top Eight Gamer, and this week I'm reviewing Saints Row 4 Re-Elected. Did Saints Row 4 really need a re-release? Was the game good enough in the first place to warrant it? And what does Re-Elected add to the base game to bring fans back for another go? Let's find out. After tying up loose ends from the previous game, the Third Street Saints find themselves in the Oval Office, as the boss has miraculously campaigned his way from semi-famous gang leader to President of the United States. The President's run is cut short, however, when a race of alien conquerors invades the planet, capturing and imprisoning high-value humans within a series of nightmare simulations. It's up to the boss to get the crew back together and take down the alien menace. As far as stories go, Saints Row 4 has a ridiculous premise which proves to be fairly entertaining. Setting the majority of the action in the Matrix-like simulations provides a lot of opportunities to insert the game's brand of crude humor into a variety of missions spanning the history of the Saints themselves, as well as a myriad of nods to sci-fi and pop culture in general. It's fun, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. The re-elected version also includes two story DLC packs. How the Saints Save Christmas is a holiday-themed story focused on the boss teaming up with Santa to defeat his evil alien doppelganger, Claus. Along the way, the boss learns the true meaning of Christmas. The other DLC, Enter the Dominatrix, acts as deleted scenes meant for the original standalone downloadable title that later became Saints Row 4, complete with storyboard sequences and character commentary. They're neat, and they don't detract from the main campaign, plus they provide extra content which is rarely a bad thing. Saints Row 4's origin as a standalone add-on to Saints Row 3 really shows in its presentation and balance of content. As far as the game's visuals go, if you played Saints Row 3rd, then you've basically seen Saints Row 4. Aside from a few enemy designs and a couple of elements found in Virtual Steelport, the game's world and elements look exactly the same. There are a few visual glitches to sell the concept of this virtual world, but they end up being more distracting than anything. On top of that, the virtual world's constant red and sometimes blue filter dominates the visuals and leaves the game looking worse for it. The Saints Row games have always been known for their decent level of character customization, but in all honesty, Saints Row 4 adds very little to the already shrinking options that were found in Saints Row 3. You're now able to visually customize your weapons, which is neat, but the ability to change your layers of clothing is still locked to the first two games in the series. It makes no sense to me. While the customization options have dwindled in recent titles, Saints Row games have always had decent licensed soundtracks, and Saints Row 4 is no exception. A good variety of modern and classic rock, pop, and rap can be found on the radio, and certain gameplay moments are accompanied by some of the most recognizable songs in the game's playlist. Flying a spaceship to Hathaway's What is Love is a moment that only Saints Row could deliver. On top of that, the game features solid voice acting for the duration, including such talent as Troy Baker, Laura Bailey, and Nolan North. Hell, they even get Keith David to play himself as your vice president. How cool is that? The game's re-release on current-gen systems hasn't really affected the visuals or performance of the game too much. For the most part, Re-Elected runs at 60 frames per second, but the performance dips whenever the action picks up. Add to that the amount of texture and geometry pop-in, and it's hard to see exactly what Saints Row 4 Re-Elected is doing with the extra power of the current-gen systems. Gameplay-wise, Saints Row 4 is the biggest departure from the series' wacky take on crime-based open-world games. While you can still steal cars and shoot people with guns, these staple mechanics are brushed to the side in favor of crazier over-the-top mechanics. The game becomes less of an open-world crime game and more of a superhero game. The addition of simulation-enabled superpowers is welcome, even if it does make other mechanics feel less useful. The super speed and super jump abilities make traversal quick and surprisingly fun, especially since the world is littered with glyphs to collect as you bound across city blocks. Does it make vehicles sort of obsolete? Sure, but certain instances remove your powers allowing for a decent mix of classic Saints Row gameplay mixed with this over-the-top new stuff. The added combat abilities are fun and add a decent variety to the formerly gun-centric gameplay. While guns still play a large part, using your elemental blasts and telekinesis keeps things not only interesting but extremely satisfying. Levitating your enemies only to blast them into the distance never gets old. While the core mechanics never get old, the constant side missions wear thin pretty quickly. I don't have a problem with side content and it definitely helps with the longevity of the game, but it feels like the main campaign missions are few in comparison to the activities recycled from Saints Row 3. Some of them are given a new superpowered twist and there are some genuinely fun ones like Genki's telekinesis based Mind Over Murder, but the main missions are where the game shines and there's three times less of them than there is filler side content. 
As I mentioned earlier, there are a couple of DLC packs included with the re-elected edition, but aside from a few missions and activities, the content is mainly weapons and costumes, plus vehicles that you'll rarely use, mainly because you can clear a city block in one jump. The game is an entertaining affair, marred by its lack of balance between exceptional main missions and repetitive side missions. Its roots as a standalone add-on are obvious when you so much as look at the game, and while the re-elected edition does contain some add-on content, it still feels pretty thin. Saints Row 4 re-elected gets the Top Hat Gamer rating of mediocre. While its story is a fun love letter to Saints Row's history, its recycled world and assets coupled with its poor balance between repetitive side activities and awesome main missions makes it hard to think of this as a full retail game. While the game can be genuinely entertaining, its re-release on current gen systems seems unnecessary and I don't believe it's worth full price on its own. The game can be bought alongside the standalone expansion Gat Out of Hell, which I'll be reviewing next week. I encourage checking that one out to find out if buying these games bundled together is worth it.